welcome to this really fun tutorial by Promotion because today I'm going to show you how to turn this shot into a night shot. So just follow me into After Effects. <laughs> So let's do this and today's topic is turning a day shot into a night shot or as you call it in the industry day for night. So for that we need to work on the exposure and color temperature of our shot and then we will replace the sky as well as adding moon and stars. Hey and maybe also some night active animals and of course we will lighten up all lights that would be in the background like cars, windows, lamps and so on. But why are we doing that anyways? Why don't we just shoot this during the night, you may ask? And there are two main reasons for that. The first reason is an artistic one. When you shoot at night, you lose a lot of detail in your shot. Well, because it is night. And if you want more detail, you need to bring up your ISO on your camera and that causes some grain in the image. In other words, you simply have more flexibility for your final look. So you need more information to understand that? No! no? But. You want more information? Yes! Okay. So here's a little light and camera theory. So you want to shoot at night and you want to shoot the moon, for example. Well, the moon is lit by the sun. So your camera settings for shooting the moon are about the same as for a day shot. Yes, try it out. And even the moonlight behaves almost like sunlight. Of course, it is darker, so you have to expose longer. So here's a shot, believe me or not, but this is a full moon and not the sun I took in Joshua Tree National Park on a road trip through California. So that tells us that you can use the sunlight and simply make it darker to look like moonlight. Well, almost. If we take a closer look here, you see the shadows are pretty dark with no details. And this is because at daytime you have the sun, but also the whole atmosphere around it, meaning the blue sky, and that works as a fill light. So it brightens up everything a little bit as well. And you do not have that at night. Hey, so let's do this. Here's the shot I did on that nice snowy mountain. And I did that from a tripod. And the camera move you see in the shot is done in post-production and we will have a look at that at the end of this video. But for that, let's directly make the comp size a bit bigger so we can Go to comp, settings, hey, and make it bigger. Maybe twice as high. And here's a cool trick. You can use all fields in After Effects also as a calculator. So I simply type in times two and now we can position our shot at the bottom. And an easy way to do that is by going to the align tool and click on the bottom. Now we have some place to work with, great. And let's quickly roto out the sky. By the way, this is also why I choose this camera angle, because now I do not need to key or roto out myself as I'm always below the horizon. But wait, oh, the tree is pretty hard to roto though. Oh, and I have my lazy day today. Mm, and I even cut it off the top of the tree. Oops, nothing to worry about. I will show you an awesome trick later on when we talk about today's sponsor. Envato. But for now, let's do this quick and dirty. Bring out the Lumetri color effect and bring it directly onto the footage. Bring down the exposure as expected, just like so. And of course, it's your artistic choice how dark you want to do it. Or maybe you have watched the fourth season of The Sinner on Netflix. Here they filmed everything that should be night for real by night. But the main scene, the most important one they filmed during the day and made it look like night. Now that scene stands out to all the other scenes, almost like a bluish tinted dream shot. Great, love the idea behind it. Because now you have the attention of the viewer and once you see it, you can never unsee it. So watch out for night scenes in movies and check for yourself. But I will go realistically dark and we have learned that we would lose a lot of details because the shadows are even darker. So let's bring them down. I hope you see the difference it makes to the shot. And as it is typically colder at night, you can also play with the color temperature or simply tinted blue. Now let's work on the night sky. And there are two ways to do it. 
And of course, I'm going to show you both. So the first one is build everything from scratch. So here we go. Let's create a new layer and call it atmosphere. This will be the sky where it touches the horizon or the mountains in our shot. And this should be the exact same color. So let's use the fill effect and choose a color pretty close to the edge. Perfect, but too perfect. You can clearly tell it's fake, but why is that? Because the sky is brighter on the horizon level because of light pollution, meaning light from cities, traffic and so on. And of course it's brighter as the sun just set behind the mountain so you see the rest of the sunlight there. So we need a gradient for that. But we will not create a gradient. What? Uh, what? What? What is this dude talking about, you may ask now. Wait, it will make all sense in a second because there's also other stuff going on in the night sky that is dependent on this gradient. So let's kill two birds with one stone. <coughs> let's solve two issues with one solution. So we create our black night sky on a separate layer and bring it behind the atmosphere. And by black, I mean the darkest black value within our existing shot and not pure black because we want this to be realistic. And now let's simply create a mask on our atmosphere and feather that a lot to create our gradient. Now we are getting somewhere. Depending on your feather amount, we also introduce some color bending, as you see here. And maybe you had this issue before in some of your shots with super smooth color gradients. And I'm here to help because your computer or display is not able to calculate or display this correctly. So let's break up the gradient with a small amount of noise. And it can really just be a super small amount. And here we go, problem fixed. Hey, we need to stop real quick here because as I'm talking about color bending, you may actually see more bending than I do. And this is because of the screen recording that I'm doing at the moment. So here is an actual picture of what the bending will look like. And this is a picture with the corrected bending with the noise or grain effect. So for you to get the best quality as possible, I will every once in a while click that exposure button and bring the exposure up to like two or 2.5 f-stops. So you get the best quality and I can always switch back to my final quality. Now let's bring out some stars. I'm going to create a new layer again and call it stars. And let's make it red and apply the star burst effect to it. And we can play with the scatter and size to get the look that we're after, meaning more or less stars. Oh, and we want to set the speed to zero unless you want to have a Star Trek warp effect. And now you also see why we created a red layer, because I wanted to show you that the star color is the same as your layer color and you have no setting to change that within the effect. And this is why I'm adding a fill effect again to play with the color. And to match my dark snowy scene, I'm going for a blue color. And to finish this off, let's also bring them a little bit out of focus because you know they're kind of far away. And the camera lens blur does just that in a super realistic way. Hey, and remember how we created the atmosphere gradient? Now we can bring the star asset between the night sky and the atmosphere. Because if you take a look at the night sky, you will only see the stars at the really dark parts of the sky and unfortunately not around the horizon. Well, unless you live in a desert, the Antarctic or somewhere else far away from any light source. Oh, and it needs to be long after sunset. Okay, let's finish off the first night sky with a cool trick because we can go onto our atmosphere layer now and with the feather amount, we can adjust the thickness of our atmosphere or haze or fog. And with the different layers, you can now also get cool looks for your gradient. You wanna have a fairy tale sunset? Well, here you go. Now up to the second method of creating a realistic night sky. And it will not get any more realistic than that. And this is a trick that I normally would not share because it's something really special 
within my workflow. But I thought, as all of you have subscribed by now, I want to give something back to all of you. Oh, some of you haven't subscribed yet? No, no worries. I give you a few seconds to do so. And... Ta-da! Here's the secret for a realistic night sky. Take a picture of the night sky. And two things that can be tricky about that. So first, you have to go outside. And second, it also has to be night. But besides that, it's pretty easy. As it is dark, you have to get a long exposure shot. So this shot here I took this New Year's Eve at the Lake Chiemsee and I exposed this one for 8 seconds. ISO is set to 400 and for all you photo nerds out there, it's a 24mm lens with an f-stop of 1.4. And hey, I also set this to 1.4 because why not? The workflow is now the same. You can use the real horizon line to blend it in or stick with the atmosphere layer that we have just created. Nothing easier than that. So now let's spice up this shot with some night assets. And therefore, let's go to Envato Elements. Hey, by now, you may already know that I'm a huge fan of them because they have assets for everything I'm working on. Be it templates, stock footage, images of night skies, preheat assets, like the fox and the flying bat I was using in my example video, even sound effects like the owl. And you guessed it, also the moon and even the planet Mars is out of their collection from their 3D assets. So you can find everything you want here and download every perspective you want. So you will never ever have to search for a fitting asset again. And I have created a link for you in the video description that will give you 70% discount on your first month. So you can try it out for one month for just a few bucks and you can download as much as you want. And the licenses are yours for a lifetime, even after you cancel your subscription. And with that in mind, let us fix our roto tree issue. Because if you have something tricky to roto, I use a simple trick. I use an element and place it on top. Now I have a perfect mat and also saved some time. So let's search for a fitting tree here and place it on top. And this is absolutely great as it also is a nice transition from the real shot to the added sky. And I have to confess something here. I used that trick in an older tutorial already without telling you. So every one of you thought I'm a master of Roto, but I'm just a master of cheap tricks. Okay, let's also bring out the bat and the moon. So let's start with the moon. Again, it is an artistic choice how big you want to have it. But honestly, in such a shot, the moon would be super small. Like super, super small. And as I told you, it's super bright as it gets lit directly from the sun. So to make this realistic, the moon itself would be overexposed. But for the sake of this, let's not blow it out completely so that we at least see something of it. And let us also apply a glow effect. One small glow on top of the moon so it gets some nice glowy outline and a second version of it with a really, really, really big radius. So it works as an interactive light for the whole scene. Almost there. But we are still missing the most important thing here. The bat. Bring it in. Color correction. Done. And now to the real important thing. All the lights that would turn on during night time. So let's create a new solid in a color that our light should be. Like yellowish orange. And now all there is to do is simply hard work. So zoom into your image and create lights, windows, street lamps, you name it. You can also do different solids with different colors to get more variation. And once you think you are done, do twice the amount of lights on top of the already existing ones. Believe me, the more time you put into this, the better. So I think I've shown this to you before, but this is a beer commercial I did already a several years ago. And the background image is simply a high res Google Earth image at daytime. So all the lights you see are masks, some of them animated to act like cars, for example here on Brooklyn Bridge, as well as all the small lights on the bridge itself. 
So it's all about the details. And as we have created the glow layer for the moon already, this will also pick up all the lights we have created. And again, feel free to use a camera lens blur to bring them slightly out of focus. And when you are finished, there's still one thing I promised I would show you at the end. The fake camera movement. So let's create a new composition, our final composition, 1920 by 1080 or in other words, full HD, and place our bigger comp within that to give it a handheld feeling. I'm going to set a wiggle expression to the position and rotation. Another trick here is to separate the dimensions before doing that. So in that way it wiggles in different ways up and down, then it wiggles left and right. And <laughs> I'm not going to go too much in detail for the wiggle effect here as I have a dedicated all you need to know about the wiggle in five minutes video. And the link is in the description. Okay, but we need to scale our comp a little bit up as because of the wiggle we see the border of the frame and then all there is to do is to keyframe the position and voila, 95% done. And to reach 98% I'm going to add an adjustment layer with an optics compensation. Bring it up a bit so I get a bit of a wide angle lens distortion at the edges of the frame even while we do the fake camera movement. And if you lose information at the edge of your frame, simply add a transform effect behind it and scale it up a bit and finish this up with a vignette effect. So this layer is giving us all lens effects. We need to make this look realistic. Hey, and the last 2% of the shot would be the shooting star. But honestly, that is enough content for a whole new tutorial. But if you are interested on how I created that, let me know in the comments and I will do that tutorial for you as soon as possible. And also, as this is the end of the tutorial, feel free to drop me a line in the comments. If you have questions or suggestions, I'll try to answer all of them. Hey, and if you want to know more about the camera equipment I use for this shot, as well as for the night sky, there's a list in the video description. And if you want more camera tutorials or just want to say hi, you can do that now. And hey, also a subscription would be really cool, as I recently found out that my sleeping quality gets better the more new subscribers I have. Strange. But anyways, I wish you a lot of fun creating your night scenes in After Effects.